Isaiah 59 Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. No one enters suit justly. No one goes to law honestly. They rely on empty pleas. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and give birth to iniquity. Wow. So the word that caught my attention was mischief. See, guys, we live in a world that words mean something. And we got to understand what we've been taught words mean is not necessarily what it means. So I looked up the legal definition of mischief. And this is coming out of the good book, you guys, the Bible. So when you look up mischief, it means an offense against property that typically involves the intentional or reckless infliction of damage, defacement, alteration, or destruction of property. Alteration, an offense against property. Defacement, when you look up that, it says to destruct or spoil appearance of. To destruct or spoil appearance of. That is, I'm telling you, words mean something. Mischief, an offense against property. Let's continue. They hatch adder's eggs. They weave the spider's web. He who eats their eggs dies. And from one that is crushed, a viper is hatched. Their webs will not serve as clothing. Men will not cover themselves with what they make. Their works are works of iniquity, and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they do not know, and there is no justice in their paths. They have made their roads crooked. No one who treads on them knows peace. Therefore justice is far from us, and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light, and behold, darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon, as in the twilight. Among those in full vigor, we are like dead. Whoa, it's all about looking up the definitions. The word vigor, what does that even mean? It said, amongst those in full vigor, we are like dead men. Vigor, okay? It's all about understanding what words mean. Because you can read something, y'all, but if you don't understand what the word actually mean, you know, and this is why re back then books and everything was taken away from us. Because there's power in reading. The pen is swifter than a sword, as a wise man had once said. <laughs> but let's look at the word vigor. So what does that mean? Effect, effective legal status. Whoa. If I don't pause right there. Effective legal status. Wow. It says we grope. For the wall like the blind, we grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight amongst those in full effective legal status. We are like dead men. Vigor me effective legal status. Wow. Let's continue. Dead men. We all growl like bears. We moan and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities. 
transgressing and denying the Lord and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart lying words. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away, for truth has stumbled in the public squares, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, so will he repay. Wrath to his adversaries, repayment to his enemies. To the coastlands he will render repayment. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, for he will come like a rushing stream, which the wind of the Lord drives. And a Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. So, another word that caught my attention, and a Redeemer will come to Zion. What does Redeemer mean? Let's look up that word. Okay, it's all about definitions. So redeem, to pay back as when, to pay back as when an owner who had mortgaged his or her real property pays off the debt. Wow, so it means to pay back as when an owner who had mortgaged his or her real property and pays off his debt. Wow, words mean things. Let's continue. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you, and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, or out of the mouth of your offspring, or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. So another word I want to look up. What does the word mean? Covenant in legal terms. What does covenant mean? A covenant means a covenant is a formal agreement or promise. Okay. Usually included in a contract or deed. Wow. In the Bible, it said, and, and for this, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. And when you look up the word covenant, a covenant is a formal agreement or promise usually included in a contract or deed. Y'all, the whole point of this is for me to just encourage somebody to say, when you read this good book, please, please look up definitions and look them up in the legal terms. OK, what we've been taught it is, it's not exactly what it is. I feel like we've been taught to read the Bible a certain way and look at it in a way so like we we took on this religious um, background like so hard that the the whole meaning of the Bible and how we've been taught is not really what how we should be looking at it. And I encourage someone to start looking at the Bible to really see what what they're really talking about because when you read this it has a lot to do with what's going on nowadays with our government our system we have to truly understand that words mean things and actually the bible is telling us a lot but we are applying the words and applying the messages the wrong way i was just up this morning i actually got up super early and i just read isaiah 59 and I really wanted to break it down because everything I do now, I break down the words to, to things because there's power in your pen. There's a reason why court stars in the mail. There's a reason why it's more power um, writing these institutions versus us sitting on the phone with them. Like It's very important to understand verbiages and words and terms because we use the wrong, wrong words, even in our letters, using the word I in your letters. It's not what we think it is. 
Why are you using I? Who is I? Who is you? Were